boat going to Southern Islands, sailing and reach before the following sea. She was making for the trees on the outside, on the downhill run to Papa A. Hey there friends, what's going on? So today we're going to look at Southern Cross by Crosby, Stills & Nash from 1982. A super fun song to play. I've been a fan of this one for quite a long time and a lot of you have written in in the Song Notes community asking for a lesson on this one. So here we go. I'm happy to teach it to you. So let's dive in and look at the basics and later on I'll get to some of the intermediate and advanced stuff with strumming. There's lots of little tricks you can use to this one to sort of sound like Crosby, Stills & Nash, right? They have a whole bunch of instrumentation in their album version. With one guitar, it can be tough to sound like them, but you have options. So let's look at it, right? First up, the chords you'll need. These three chords are going to make up a majority of the song. Just your A major. Then we'll need a G major. Now for this one, I'm going to use this voicing, which has my ring finger on the second string, third fret. And the reason why is you're going to switch to the D quite a bit. This is the other chord we'll need, a D major. And when you're switching between the G and the D, which you're going to do in the intro and the verse and in the pre-chorus, notice how this finger is already in position when you play your G to switch to that D, right? You're just going to keep it there. It makes that transition really easy, okay? And then this note is also going to be heard in the sort of melody of the song, the vocal melody. So having this in your G voicing is going to make it sound a bit more like Crosby, Stills, and Nash. So uh, we have our A, we have our G, and we have our D. A little bit later on, I'm going to talk about how you can spice up the A with some sus2 and sus4 voicings, right? Where all on the second string, just by taking our ring finger off, or whatever finger you're using for the second string, taking that off gives us an A sus2. Put it back for a regular A, and put your pinky down for an A sus4, okay? This is going to be used for a little bit of just color and spice as we're strumming, you know? And the same thing for the D. You can sort of go to a D sus2 and to a D sus4. Okay? And this D sus4 we're actually going to use in our uh, intro and first little progression here. And the cool thing about this D sus4 voicing, these two fingers are exactly where they need to be for the G major. Okay? As we go from our G to a D sus4, these two fingers are already there. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's look at this intro and verse riff here. This progression is going to be used for the entire intro and the entire verse. So you want to learn it pretty well. And it has this really distinctive sound, right? Where for the first three chords we play, the A, the G, and the D, we're effectively going to do this thing where we do two strums, and then you sort of silence the strings. If nothing else, just sort of put your hand right here, your right hand, sort of kill the sound. So you strum, and just, you know, lightly hit it. You don't need to do a whack or anything. You can if you want to get a bit more percussive. But let's keep it nice and chill for now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So those are the first two chords, the A and the G. And when we go to our D, we're going to want to do the same thing, but on the first down strum of the D, do a D sus4. OK? So the first three chords, just A, and then the G, then the D sus4 to D, and then you silence. But right after you silence it on the D, you're going to do another strum of the D, okay? So if you look at those first four measures here, every measure has four counts. So if we count, we can start off counting nice and slow. It would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And notice in that fourth measure, we're not going to play anything. And the reason why is we already played that D on the last count of the third measure. See that four count right there? That D came one quarter note early. And if you listen to Crosby, Stills, and Nash play this song, you're going to hear that very clearly. That's called a pushed chord, right? It's happening earlier than it should, and it kind of catches our ear off guard. It's used to great effect throughout this song, so, um, and lots of other songs as well. It's a nice little thing to be aware of, right? So one more time, let's do that first half nice and slow. A, silence. G, silence. D, two, three, four. Then all we have to do is repeat that entire thing, and at the end, the very last chord that we play on the four count is going to be an A instead, okay? And that's going to give us the whole intro. So let me play it here. I'll count the whole thing. So A, silence, and G, silence, and D, one, two, 
three again. A, then G, and D, back to A. Okay, so that's gonna be the entire intro. Um, that's gonna be used during the verse as well. So you really wanna make sure you learn this. And if that D sus four is giving you trouble at first, you can, you can forget about the sus four and just do a regular D. If that, if that helps you focus on just the rhythm, here it is, the whole thing, no D sus four. I'm just gonna use a regular D wherever you see the sus four, okay? So A, silence, G, two, three, four, A, G, D, and it ends on an A, okay? So that's gonna be the foundation of things. Slow this down, rewind it, get my song sheet and practice along. But again, and you can listen to Crosby, Souls and Nash play it. It helps to sort of hear them play it, imagine you're strumming if you need to, sort of try to get your, your hand going in that beat to get that push chord especially. Now one little trick you can use here, if you want to sort of uh, um, add a bit more filler strums, you can. One example is you could just do a, Right? I'm just sort of doing down, up, down, up after I mute the string. So one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and then just do some loose strums on the D. Okay, I'll do that again slowly. All I'm doing there is a couple things is I'm silencing the strings with my right hand, as I showed you before, and while there's silence, I'm just sort of doing some strumming. There's no reason you can't do this, and it creates that cool percussive sound, which kind of keeps uh, the groove going forward, even though you're not playing notes, per se, right? And the other thing I'm doing there is, in that fourth measure and in that eighth measure, right, you just have the D and the A ringing out. So while they're ringing, you can just do some free strumming. Just try to keep your hand sort of pulsing in time and just brush the strings. You don't need to do it too hard, right? But let me play the whole thing again for you. I'll do it nice and slow and I'll show you what it sounds like with some filler strums, so. Okay, so that's all we're gonna need. That alone can be a nice little riff to practice. And the great thing is, when we get to the verse, which I'll start talking about now, we're gonna go through and use that entire progression just over and over again while we're singing, okay? A couple things are gonna come up during the verse. There's gonna be a B minor section that comes up, but that B minor, it's only used for a single strum. And if you can't play the B minor, you can just do a G chord instead, and it's gonna sound just fine. But let me play through the verse. I'll do the first couple verses here, and you'll see what I mean here with that same strumming pattern I was showing you before, okay? So, got out of town on the boat, going to Southern Islands, sailing a reach before following sea. She was making for the trees on the outside, on the downhill run to Papa Ete. Off the wind on this heading lies the Marquesas. We got 80 feet of water line, nicely making way in a noisy bar in Avalon. I tried to call you, but on the midnight watch, I realized why twice you ran. Okay, so on that twice you ran away, once you get to the A, you're gonna start sort of strumming a bit more consistently going into the pre-chorus. Really quick though, before we move into the pre-chorus, let's move backwards here. Well, when twice you ran away, that little section there, you're just gonna do a single strum of D, B minor, and A, okay? If you can't do B minor, you could do just the thinnest four strings, okay? Just forget about the bar, forget about the fifth string, that's totally fine or you can just do a G chord instead. And that would sound like this, right? But on the midnight watch I realize why twice you ran away. Sounds just fine, right? Think about. Now let's go to the pre-chorus here. So the pre-chorus and the chorus, we're just gonna use more G, D, and A. Now the strumming pattern I'm gonna use here is more of a down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down down, down, up, down. You sort of want to memorize this pattern, okay? Be able to do it without thinking, if you can. And 
Use that for every chord. So it would be, think about, think about how many times I have fallen all in. Spirits are using me, the larger voice is called all in. Every time you see a chord written above a lyric, you're going to play one measure of that chord, right? Four counts. What heaven brought you and me cannot be forgotten. Stay on A, right? And I have been around the world. Okay, what's happening here? A couple things. No new chords. We already know the chords. We're going to start off by doing, I like to do this D sus4. I have been around. So here we're going to do the D sus4 for two counts, go to a regular D, go to a G, right? And you would think this is a full measure of G, but that A is actually going to come a little bit early, right? So if we counted it, the A is going to come on the four count. It's another pushed chord, just like in the intro, okay? So if we counted it and I just did down strums, it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And repeat it three times. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'll use the regular strumming in a second. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you know it will. Okay, that's the sort of strumming on the down strum um, on every quarter note, right? But let me do the regular strumming pattern of down, 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 up, down, 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 up. Ready? And let's been around the world looking for that woman girl who knows she loves who knows love can endure and you know it will Okay, so that's all we're gonna need for the chorus and the pre-chorus that I just showed you there. So that's the entire song. You just repeat the verse a couple more times. You're gonna do the pre-chorus and chorus again, and then you're gonna do one final verse and end it with the intro, which I already showed you. So those are the main parts of this song. And a couple more quick tips is adding those D sus twos and D sus fours along with the A sus two and sus four. Whenever you're on a D or an A chord, especially at the end of each line, you can sort of sprinkle those in however you see fit. It's gonna sound good. Now, if you wanna watch the sort of uh, slow strumming with the tab on the screen and the sort of uh, strumming directions on the screen, I have that written out for the verse, pre-chorus and chorus. It's in an extended video. It's over on my website. You can just find the link in the description of this video. I wanna keep that one separate just to keep things nice and tight here. Again, I have this song sheet available. It's three pages. Made with absolute love and care. It has everything carefully formatted on page one as far as the lyrics for the entire song with the chords. Um, and pages two and three give you the tabs, the strumming. And I also get into some alternative ways that you can play that main riff, right? Uh, for example, you could do a sort of... What I'm doing there is I'm sort of using the second and third strings to capture the melody notes that you hear the bass guitar play on the album version, which is this. Right? You hear that in the album. How can we play that with a guitar? Well, I'll show you in the other lesson. So check that one out. But let's do that playthrough now, and uh, this is a fun song, so let's do it. All right.